What a week here at Ramamu. We began our third year of the Ramamu Yeshiva this week. The world's only fully egalitarian program for tech study that mixes together meditation, mysticism, and mindfulness. That's what we did on Monday. And on Tuesday, we held our first and hopefully our last virtual or digital benefit an evening to raise much needed funds for the Ramu operating budget, as well as an opportunity to raise praise for two of our remarkable communal leaders, Marsha Meislin and Karen Goldstick. Between these two events together, the opening of a center in which next generation leaders are able to learn Torah, moving from spiritual consumers to participants in the endless unpacking of our tradition and its relevance, between that event and the recognition of communal leaders who work tirelessly of their own time and talent and passion. We have a link to something remarkable that takes place in our weekly wisdom, Parshat Bahalot Cha, tomorrow morning's Torah reading. In Parshat Bahalot Cha, we have a remarkable story that if you aren't familiar with it, it's kind of a wacky story. So much of what happens in the book of Numbers, so much of the book of Numbers is dedicated to a kind of disgruntled liminal space in which the Israelite nation finds itself as it leaves the prison of Mitzrayim of Egypt on its way to the paradise of the promised land. And somewhere stuck here in the middle of you, the kind of Israelites are, are you know, full of experiences and also complaints and so too, in tomorrow morning's reading, they'll complain, they'll complain about food. They'll start talking about how it was so great for them in the land of Egypt and how they wish that they had, of all things, after being given manna from heaven and being sick of it, they wished for, of all things, meat. They wanted meat. Not unlike the story in my big fat Greek wedding where she says, you don't want meat, you don't eat no meat, I'll give you, know, I'll give you the lamb. No, they want meat, they want quail. So God gives them quail, and then what ensues is this wonderful story, difficult to understand, where Moshe complains and says, I can't handle feeding all these people on my own. Another moment in Moshe's leadership. And God says, well, gather together a group of 70 elders, and I'll give them the spirit that will allow them to be leaders with you. And so this moment happens, and... Vayetze Moshe Vayidaber La'am, verse 24, in tomorrow morning, chapter 9, Moshe goes out to speak to the people, and he gathers the 70 people together, the 70 leaders, the elders. Vayamodotam Svota Oil, and he stands them around the tent. Vayered Adonai Banan, and God comes down in a cloud. Vayidaber Elav, Vayatzel Mina Ruach Asher Elav, and God speaks to Moshe and takes from his spirit, he draws from the spirit of Moshe. And he gives it to these 70 elders. This great term. And they begin to prophesize. From the word Navi, which means to be a prophet. They begin to prophesize. And they, don't, they can't stop prophesizing. They're like, it's like speaking in tongues. They're, they're, they're ecstatic. There's this remarkable moment. But there are two elders who remain in the camp one is named Eldad and the second one is named Medad and they prophesize more than the others it would seem they're full of the spirit and somehow this threatens the order some lad goes to tell Moses, he says to him, there's this Eldad and Medad, and they're prophesizing in the camp. <laughs> so at this moment in the text, we're wondering what's about to happen, right? This Nar, this lad comes to tell Moshe, and Moshe doesn't even say a word. Joshua jumps in. Joshua, who's of course the second to Moshe, it's the one who, you know, Moshe is, right hand person and Joshua jumps in and says Vayaan Yahshua ben Nun Mesharet Moshe 
Adoni Moshe Kla'im. He says, Joshua says to Moshe, my Lord Moses, you should destroy them. Destroy them. Wipe them out. And Moshe says to Joshua, are you jealous on my behalf? Are you jealous for me? For my benefit? He says, would that some who would it be? Would that God would make all of the people prophets? Would that all of God's people would have that spirit rest upon them? And so this remarkable scene, which frankly is directly in contrast with a later scene in the in the book of Numbers, where a cousin of Moshe, whose name is Korach, gets up in the camp and seems to be challenging the hierarchy of Moshe's prophecy, seems to be saying, hey, what about us? This Korach rebellion that takes place later in the Torah, in the book of Numbers, seems to run counter to this moment where Moshe seems to be so generously and beneficently saying, hey, Joshua, enough with the zealousness. Would that everyone were a prophet. In the story of Korach and the rebellion of Korach, there is no such mosaic statement. Moshe doesn't come along and say, would that everyone were like Korach. Would that everyone were like the complaint of Korach who said, why not, why am I not the leader of the people? And what's the difference between Korach, that story of rebellion, and this story of Eldad and Midad? And what is it that Moshe is really telling Joshua when he says to him, are you jealous for me? Would that everyone were prophet? I was reminded when I was thinking about this this week of the great late Lord Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs of blessed memory, who on Parsha Korach on the Parsha of Korach in fifty seven seventy three, some eight years ago, wrote these words. There are two forms or dimensions of leadership. He wrote, one is power, and the other he wrote is influence. Often we confuse the two. After all, those who have power often have influence, and those who have influence have a certain kind of power. But in fact, he writes, the two are quite different, even opposites. He says, we can do a thought experiment, very simple. Imagine you have total power, and then you decide to share it with nine others. You now have one-tenth of the power with which you began. But imagine, he says, by contrast, that you have a certain measure of influence, and now you share it with nine others. How much do you have left not less, in fact, more. He writes, influence works by multiplication where power operates by division. With power, the more we share, the less we have. And with influence, the more we share, the more we have. He says that Moshe embodied the two different roles that the Torah allocates for both of these centers, the center of power and the center of influence. Classically, the power was held by the king and the prophet or the Navi was the one who influenced. The prophet was the one who spoke truth to power, the one who had no power but had great influence. And the king, who fought wars, who allocated resources and taxed the people, the king had great power. And in Moshe's case, he writes, Moshe had both. Moshe was both a prophet, a Navi, and also, in so many ways, in the pre-monarchical Israelite culture, he was also the king. He fought their wars. In the story of Korach, Korach seeks to replace Moshe as king, he writes. But in the story of Eldad and Medad, in this week's Torah portion, Eldad and Medad represent the multiplication and impact of influence. In this, Moshe says, would that everyone were to realize that they were an influencer, that they had impact, that they could change the world, that they too could prophesize just like me. Moshe experiences his prophetic influence as a blessing. Would that everyone were blessed with that kind of awareness, Moshe says. When Romo began at Yeshiva, our desire was to both involve next generation leaders with both power and authority and impact to be able to make a claim on the tradition 
and to recognize that they could make a difference, to give them access and resources to texts that are normally hidden away, texts and practices that are deeply embodied sources of deep personal and spiritual power so that they too might become those who say, would that everyone were a Navi, would that everyone would realize that they have an impact and an influence. And when we lifted up Marsha and Karen this week, in really we were recognizing two people who already are influencing on the ground the entirety of our warp and woof of this community. They aren't the quote unquote rabbis or clergy team. They're not running the board, but they're influencing their friends and those who walk through the doors, lifting them up and showing the power of multiplication, the power of increased influence, increased touch, and most importantly, increased impact. This entire week, I've been thinking about power and influence. Because in many ways, in our generation, the two are colliding, merging in ways that we perhaps had never seen before. It's possible for someone to be an influencer now with millions and millions and millions of followers to make a statement that impacts the lives of millions of people that they have never met and not hold any office or any authority. It's possible to be someone who makes a huge difference around the globe with the kinds of things that we say, the kinds of information or disinformation that we share, the kinds of frames and memes that we employ. With this latest uptick of anti-Semitism that has gripped our country and the globe, we're seeing very deeply the impact that influencers have on the ground for bad. And we also know the power that people have for good. And the Torah reminds us, the Shabbos, our communal leaders remind us, our next generation rabbis remind us that there is great holy work to be done to make a positive impact and influence those around us. It doesn't have to be a million people. It could just be one. It could just be wherever you are. Halavai, Moshe says that all of us realize that we too can be influencers. So this blessing to both of you, Rabbi Zinko and Rabbi Pearlstein, this blessing to you, Marsha Meislin, and to Karen Goldstick, and to this entire beautiful community. What you do matters. What you say matters. How you comport yourself matters. The impact you will make in the world is itself the greatest power that you could possibly own. Blessings to all of us to hear Moshe's words. Would that all of us were to see how much we can be. Please rise if you are able.